How are you doing in your adult spring break? Remember, we are picking one project to really put all of our time and effort into and in getting organized in the evenings or during the day during this week. So on Monday, we downloaded our printables for the adult spring break where I'm walking you through picking the space that you're gonna organize, planning out your time. Yesterday we started day one of organizing where we did one third of the project. Today we are going to do the second third of the project. It's Wednesday, it's hump day. This is the day where you just need to have an extra Diet Coke, grab a coffee, you can have wine if you want. This is the day where we are gonna put in the most time and the most effort, and this will feel like the hardest day. And the reason why this will feel like the hardest day is because we're not starting and we're not done yet. And in the middle is the hardest for any project that you're doing. Figuring out, planning, dreaming, getting started, there's a lot of energy to that. Crossing the finish line, finishing a project, there's a lot of energy in that. Wednesday, hump day, middle of your organizing project, middle of your work project, you know the middle is messy and that is where it's hard, but that is where the most learning happens. It's easy to, at the end of a project, to say, oh, I'm done, I'm not gonna finish this part, shove it in the bottom of a closet, or say it's good enough and I'm just gonna be done, or at the beginning to go shopping at Target and buy all of the containers and be like, this is going to be amazing when I'm doing it, but when you're in the middle of a project, you have to wrestle with the hard choices of do I want it or don't I want it anymore? How many turtlenecks do I need? My aunt would say I need zero turtlenecks. I would say I need every color and I need multiples of every turtleneck. So what do you need? How many of each thing do you need? We are focusing on three different spaces. You can pick a different space, but I'm trying to pick three spaces, one of which will resonate with everyone to give you practical, actionable tips. Either your garage, or your bedroom, or your closet and your clothes. And yesterday, we really talked a lot about your closet and your clothes, and not emptying the entire closet, but just taking out one section. So maybe everything you wear on the top, blouses, sweaters, turtlenecks, sweatshirts, tops. You took all of your tops out and you put them on your bed. And then you bounce back and forth between decluttering and keeping, decluttering and keeping. And so at first you got rid of everything that you didn't want anymore or didn't fit or was ruined or just was out of season, like it's gone. And then you decided what are your favorites? What are you gonna keep? Like what do you wanna make sure you don't get rid of? And you put those back in your closet and you kept going back and forth. And you probably ended up at the end of the day with about 20% mm, of what you had taken out of your closet and you weren't sure, do I get rid of it or do you keep it? And I said to keep it because I'd rather you keep more and get rid of what you know you don't want than get rid of too much and then stop decluttering in other sections. So if you are doing your master closet, I want you to go ahead and I want you to do all of your bottoms today, everything that you would wear in the bottom leggings, jeans, dress pants, sweatpants, all of your bottoms. So your tops are done yesterday, I want you to do your bottoms today. Today we're gonna really talk about um, your bedroom. So I told you that when you go in your bedroom and you look at each wall, that's going to be a different section of your room. For kids' bedrooms, which I call your mini apartments, this is super important because in a kid's bedroom, you literally have everything inside of your main house on a micro scale inside of a kid's bedroom. And I want them to start taking ownership for that. So one wall may have clothing items and another wall may have toys and another wall may have things related to school. So today, as you go into your master bedroom possibly, which I call your condo, which might also be your office based on the quarantine, I want you to look at your bedroom based in zones. And maybe yesterday you just got the floor picked up. And remember, I mentioned in a master bedroom, often we will have filing cabinets, we'll have memorabilia, we'll have things that we want to have private and not out in the open if we have large families, if we have young children. It is amazing the things that we will collect in our bedroom. So today, we're gonna really talk about our bedroom and this is where you go, uh, like I know how to put, I don't want to, but I know how to put my clothes away, I know how to do the laundry, and usually if I could just get through all of the clothing in any bedroom that we're in and pick up, as in shove things in drawers or under the bed, at least it looks okay and I walk out. It is the messy middle day. 
And so we are going to deal with what is under the bed, what is shoved in the drawers. I want you to really go into your bedroom space and I want you to stand there, set a timer on your phone for three minutes, and I want you to just stand there and look and do absolutely nothing. I know, I give the weirdest ideas. And what I want you to do is I want you to look around and I want you to just think, what do I like? What don't I like? What is serving me today in this quarantine in April of 2020? And what will I want my bedroom to look like in the fall of 2020? We can make decisions for today that are only going to last for four, six, or eight weeks. That's okay. We can always switch everything back later. What do you like? What don't you like? So I'm going to give you a very specific example. Before I even started professional organizing, back when I was a teacher and my kids were very young, I would go on play dates. And we would, um, moms would meet in different houses and our kids would play and we would just talk for hours. It was super fun, but I like to be productive. So I would organize people's pantries and I would organize the toy room while we were sitting there talking. And one day my good friend had an older child. So our kids were little and they were like preschool age and they were playing, but she was grade school age. And in her bedroom, there were so many stuffed animals. I mean like 200 stuffed animals and not just that, but all kinds of tchotchke things like things that had been collected from every vacation her mom and grandmother had ever taken. Um, her mom and grandmother were only children and she was the oldest. And so she had all of the hand-me-downs and her bedroom was large, but it was full of memorabilia. And she also loved to play animals and horses and she had all kinds of different play sets that were in her room. And so her mother was talking about how her room was never organized. And I said, okay, two things. One, I will organize your daughter's room with her, but I have two rules. One, you cannot be involved. It has to be me and your child. And that's how I did it as a professional organizer as well. And number two, she's allowed to get rid of everything she wants to get rid of and you can't tell her she has to keep it. So you may want to keep the memorabilia, the stuffed animals or whatever, because the mom wanted to keep the things. I wasn't sure if the daughter did, but I knew the mom didn't want to get rid of anything because everything was sentimental and everything had value to her. And I said, I want you to let me work with your daughter. And if she either doesn't want it or doesn't want it on display, she's allowed to say that. So the daughter and I went into that bedroom and we talked about, we just stood in the middle, kind of like I have Abby do at the grocery store. Just hold your hands like this. Don't touch anything. So we stood in the middle and I said, what do you see that you love? What do you see that you like, but you don't want on display anymore? And what do you just want to get rid of? Now, she was a very sentimental child too, and I wasn't sure if she was or wasn't, but she was. And so she said, there are a lot of things in this room. I don't really want to get rid of anything because it all has memories and meaning, but I am tired of seeing 200 stuffed animals and 89 precious moments things. And there was just, it was like living in a museum. And she said, I don't want any of that. And all of my horses are stuck in the, in the closet. I want the horses out so I can have a barn and I can have, you know, like I could play, like I want to play. So we grabbed some bins and we started filling everything and I went stuffed animal by stuffed animal by stuffed animal, figurine by figurine by figurine. And it ended up that she ended up keeping about 20% of the stuffed animals and 20% of the figurines on display. And the other 80% went into boxes that we stored in the top of her closet. She also had a large closet. If you don't have that, I would say to store those in the storage room. She wanted to save those, her mom wanted to save those, but she was tired of seeing it on display. Like she was going into middle school. She didn't want this childhood bedroom anymore. And so I'm going to give you the permission to stand there in the middle of your bedroom and look around and say, just because I love this and just because I love the memory does not mean that I want to see it every single day. So Greg and I just repainted our master bedroom. We've lived in this house for 24 years. We're about to celebrate our 25th wedding anniversary in August. And one of the things that was still on display in our bedroom was the framed um, seating chart for our rehearsal dinner that my mother-in-law had done for us. It was on an easel so you could see where you were gonna sit when you went to our rehearsal dinner 25 years ago. And we still had that hung up in our bedroom. And every time I would take it down and paint or clean or whatever, I would always hang it back up because I felt like if I took that down and didn't have it on display, I was saying that it wasn't really cool that she had done the seating display that way. I was taking a piece of my mother-in-law out of my bedroom and I didn't know how Greg felt about that. And finally I was like, dude, it's been 24 years since you got married. It was a seating chart. It doesn't have to live in my bedroom for the rest of my life. 
So if you're having a hard time figuring out what to take off of your walls or what to get rid of, what if you took all of the artwork off of your walls, put it in the hallway, and then thought, okay, what is the artwork I wanna put back? Sometimes even things like artwork or things like that need to be taken down and taken out of the space so you could decide what you wanna put back. I know that this is a shorter video today because I want you to actually get in there. I want you to push through the messy middle and tomorrow I'm going to talk to you about decluttering and organizing the garage. So in your master closet, I want you to do all your bottoms if that's what you picked. If you're in your bedroom, you probably got through putting all the clothes away because that was the easy thing you knew how to do yesterday. I want you to go in there and I want you to sit there and I want you to think, what do I need this space to give to me today? How do I want this space to feel? Obviously, we're not going to the store, we're not buying anything. Do you have pictures in the basement that you can bring up and you can put up? Do you wanna rearrange the furniture? Do you wanna add in a desk? Like in the basement, we have a small desk. I could bring that up and put that in my master bedroom if I need to, so that I would have a desk space now. Or put that in a child's bedroom because now they're working from home. Or put that in the middle of your living room because you're gonna create a school area in your living room because we need that now. How does your bedroom need to function for you today? Remember, you can get these printables at organize365.com slash blitz. And in there, again, the checklist for day two and three and four are all exactly the same. They're gonna tell you to clean, they're gonna tell you to declutter, they're gonna tell you to organize. That's just to keep you going, it's just to get you started. Once you're in there, if you want a rabbit trail and organize something different in your room, something different than I say online, that is fine. What I always say is forward momentum and progress will get you results. Organize something, anything, it doesn't matter because every time you spend more time organizing, eventually the whole house will come together. If you're contrarian, if you are a rebel and you're like, if she tells me I'm supposed to do my bedroom, my garage, or my closet, then I'm going to do the kitchen. Do it. Go for it. I, I applaud you. I give you permission. Of course, then maybe you won't want to do it, but organize anything. Anything will get you more, more organization long-term. The one thing I would love for you to do with this adult spring break is to stay in the same space. Don't do the kitchen one day and the garage the next day and the master bedroom the next day because you won't get the end result that we're gonna have at the end of the week if you do this. And also we're gonna end these videos on Friday, but you may need this weekend to finish this space. You may need to do another week. Go back and watch these videos again and you will make more progress. All right, tomorrow I'm going to talk to you about organizing. Again, today it was mostly about planning and decluttering, and this is how organization works. It's more than 50% decluttering, and then about 30% organizing, and then the last thing we do, which we'll do on Friday, is talking about increasing productivity. You might be like, how do you increase productivity in a closet? Oh, I know, and I will tell you on Friday. See you tomorrow.